Hi everybody, Jeremy here and welcome to lesson one in our interactive tutorial series. Over the course of these lessons, we're going to build a prototype in Shapes. It's going to be a productivity app and you can build along with me. Now I'm going to be moving pretty quickly through these lessons, so feel free to pause the video whenever necessary and don't worry about making your creation perfectly match mine. The purpose of these videos is to introduce you to the various tools and shapes so you feel comfortable beginning to create on your own. Now in this first lesson, we're going to just cover a few basics to help you get started. We're going to take a look at Shapes. ShapesXR's new user interface. I'm going to walk you through some basics of navigation just so you know how to move around in the world. We'll also talk about working with shapes. And lastly, we'll cover our gizmo system. So let's get started. So the UI of Shapes is composed of two main interfaces. There's the main menu, which is accessible on your non-dominant hand. This is where you'll find all the detailed universal controls and shapes. From this menu, you can activate the select tool, scenes, the asset library, interactivity, sharing options from when you're co-creating with other designers, general settings, and the return to lobby button. So this menu is also where you'll find our new inspector, but we'll cover that in detail later on. Now also on the handle of your non-dominant hand controller, you have a microphone on and off button and an MR button that allows you to toggle between VR and mixed reality. Now the second menu is our quick access tool switcher menu and that's located on your dominant hand and to access the tool switcher just press and hold the A button and move your hand back and forth to make the appropriate selection. You can choose from things like the text tool, procedural shapes, the draw tool, the selection tool, and the color tool. All right, next, let's talk about moving around in your environment. To navigate in shapes, use the grip buttons on both your controllers, and you can use these buttons to pull yourself through your environment, or you can use them to scale yourself up and down by holding down on the buttons and moving your hands together or further apart. Now, just to note, when changing your scale, you're actually changing the scale of you, not the environment. That's a really important distinction to make. Now, the second way of navigating inside a space is by teleporting. So to activate the teleportation system, just push up and hold the thumbstick on your non-dominant hand. To teleport, just point your controller anywhere on the ground and pull your trigger button. And then use your thumbstick to rotate or move forward. And then to deactivate teleporting, just pull back on your thumbstick. So let's access the shapes menu from the tool switcher. Now there are many other shapes that you can access from our assets library, but we'll cover that later on. The unique things about the shapes from this menu is the fact that you can draw them. So just select the color you want and the shape. And then by using the trigger button on your dominant hand, you can draw that shape into your environment. Now to pick up a shape, you're going to use your grip button like this. And while you're holding the object, you can quickly change the scale by moving your thumbstick to the left or the right. And if you push your thumbstick forward, you can move the object away from you as well as retract it back. Very handy when you're working in mixed reality or large scale environments. To delete an object, I simply pick up the object and give it a toss into the sky. It's that easy. We also have an undo button located on your non-dominant hand. So let's bring that shape back. Uh, now, another great feature is our duplication tool. So while holding an object, just pull your trigger finger to make as many duplicates as you want. Now we're gonna be using that duplication button a lot. So make sure you're familiar with how it works and remember where it is. Now, all the shapes located in this menu are also procedural shapes, which means we can round the corners and bevel the edges and even bend them to make unique shapes. But we'll cover that in the next lesson. Now, it's fun to come into shapes and just start adding objects. But as a designer, you want to be able to move and edit your objects with precision. And that's where our gizmo comes into play. So to activate the gizmo, choose the selection tool from your tool switcher and select the object by holding down on your trigger button and touching the object. Now that the object is selected, press the B button. That's this button here. And that toggles the gizmo on and off. So by using my grip button, I can now grab an arrow and move the object along my chosen axes. I can also rotate the object by grabbing these curved handles here. And I can scale the object from its center point by grabbing this yellow cube here. I can also move my object along a plane by pointing my controller at one of these tiny little panels, grabbing and then moving the object around. 
Now, these small white spheres here allow me to scale my object along a particular axis. So just like any 3D editing software, we often start with a basic shape and then edit it to look the way that we want. And if I hold down on my non-dominant hand trigger button and scale at the same time, you can see the object scales equidistance from the center of the object. Now, one final note about the gizmo, the duplication tool works with the gizmo as well. So just a reminder, the duplication button is the trigger button on your dominant hand. So with my grip button, I'm going to grab one of these arrows. And then as I move along the axis, I simply pull my trigger button to make duplicates. Same for rotation and moving objects along a plane. All right, that's it for lesson one. You now have a basic understanding of how to engage the system. Now, in our next lesson, we're going to start to dive a little deeper into some of our more specific creation tools. So play around for a little bit, get comfortable with the system, and we'll see you in our next lesson.